got you. Is he a mine? Zach, we're actually doing something pretty unique. We're going to use several rockets in a net to catch turkeys. Yep. What in the world would we want to do that for? Right, <laughs> for research. Yeah. This is research designed specifically to make sure our hunting regulations are where they should be for sustainability of the turkey population for hunters. Hopefully 10, 15 gobblers will come in here on the, on the bait site. May take hours, this is a waiting game, right. right? Right. But once you shoot the net and you catch these turkeys, you're gonna run out and then how, what are we gonna do to allow us to gather data? We'll put leg bands. The leg bands are on the birds. The birds are subject to harvest here in a couple months. Okay. Hunter shoots the bird, he reports it to us. This is just one sample of birds here, but we're doing this all across the state. So you're collectively- You're hoping to ban 300, right? Yeah, that's our goal. But you're so specifically that's... trying to get male Birds, right? In this case, males, yeah, because okay. we're trying to estimate spring harvest rate. That's what we're after. So bearded hens, yeah, we would ban those too. Okay. We've caught a few at this site already, so if we could get another handful, that'd be great. We've got many other sites spread out. That's part of the study is to be representative of, of the whole state. Okay. So from western Kentucky to eastern Kentucky and us in between here, we've got multiple sites in each region so we can spread things out a little bit. This is going to be really cool to watch. Yeah, it's a rodeo. <laughs> Sure. All right, well, I guess it's about time for us to get uh, back into our locations and get ready to go. All right, good deal. Check, check. Well, we've got all of our rockets set up. We've got our bait site set. We've tested everything. We should be good to go. Now it's just a waiting game. We've got big expectations of getting a good group of gobblers caught in the net. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but when it happens and that bomb takes place and that net goes out, it's gonna be a mad dash from everybody around to get out there and to try to hold these turkeys down, get them secured, get them banded, and get them released back in the wild. Yep, here we go. Our first turkey. I can't tell if it's a gobbler or not. It's got a beard. They haven't showed up yet. We've been here for several hours. It's actually warmed up. Went from about 10 degrees to in the 30s now. It feels pretty good. Some cattle are moving around. Birds are flying. Just not turkeys. goodness all in the last minute we sit there for eight hours ten hours all right life folds on all the heads we can 
Uh -uh. I think we got 11 male turkeys on the ground right now. We're getting these little socks on their heads, trying to settle them as best we can, and it's time to start the workup process. It just calms them down, keeps them from freaking out so bad. We know that they're they're male birds unless they're buried in hens, so they're all male birds. All I saw I thought I saw a Jacob. There's a couple of Jacobs in there. Do you know which one he's 2161. He's got 2160. Oh, he's got 2160. Alright. So you got the number, everything recorded. 2161 Jake, yeah, right? Everything's good on that one. We're actually doing this study in conjunction with Tennessee, Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, and Tennessee Tech University. And what we're trying to do is estimate harvest rates of male turkeys. Okay. Band number 1055. 1055. We know from Pelichek how many legally hunters harvest. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You know, mm -hmm. So this is kind of a percentage thing. Plus, we'll be able to look at survival of the birds. Got him, so I'm taking his... Hold on to him a little longer. The only way you can do that effectively is you have to disperse the number of birds you're taking yep. across the state because certain areas have higher hunting pressure and higher population of birds. Different habitats, different landscapes. You know, Kentucky's very diverse east to west. So we're doing it across the state. Both public and private lands? Yep, for sure. Okay, today we're on a private land property. Yep. But you also had some people today at Clay WMA, right? That's right, yep, yep. They caught five birds uh, right before we did these, so. Okay, how many years is this project gonna go on? for your project. This is the first one. You can just set him down. Don't, don't, don't keep hanging on to him. Well, you told me to hold on him longer a while ago. I noticed some of these are, you know, silver and some of them are green. Tell me about the green ones. Yeah, every fourth one is green. They are reward bands. Oh, okay. The purpose of the reward bands is to help us estimate harvest rate of the non-reward bands. Gotcha. They've done this type of work a long time in waterfowl world. Some type of financial or prize award if whoever turns in one of these. $75, things. yeah. And, and $75? We, we've got okay. some really good cooperation there. We have the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Okay. We'd be contacting the hunters and the funds for that are donated by the Kentucky chapter of the National Wild Turkey Federation. Okay. So okay. multiple partners helping out. So hey, if you're out and uh, hunting and you come across a turkey that's got a band on it like this, make sure you report it. Get all the information back to the agency, but the turkey is theirs to keep, the band is theirs to keep, and hey. Absolutely. I've never killed a banded turkey, have you? Nope. There's not been many banded birds since uh, George Wright years yeah. and years ago when turkeys were still being restored. And if you're lucky enough to get a green one, then there's actually a financial uh, incentive as well. That's right. All right. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yes, sir.